Tchau. Before you get started, I work out. So, hearing shit like this just makes my anxiety go through the roof. So, one day I was at the gym, just doing cardio on a treadmill. It was pretty empty. Not, not very many people were there on a Thursday at noon. I always used the treadmills in front of the mirrors so I could pay attention to the surroundings. I was on a treadmill two away from the end and all of them were empty except one at the opposite end. This man gets on a treadmill right next to me. Which is weird, but okay. I have my headphones in. What? All of them were empty except one at the opposite end. All of them were empty except for one at the opposite end. So it was like, so are you at one? So you got like Let's say f 15 treadmills. You're at one end and he's at the other? Is that what you're saying? This man gets on a treadmill right next to me. Which is weird, but okay. That's not weird. That's like... He out to get in that ass. He's out for some clockness. And it's a good thing that you already on a treadmill. And I don't know what kind of shoes you got on. Hopefully, preferably, it's the Adidas 26.7 millions on. You know what I mean? But if it's not that, then I would say the Adidas, the 1900s. Yeah, from way back when. Because those definitely got the job done. Yeah, because he, 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 that's crazy. All them treadmills, he, he right next to you? That's not weird. He's going to do, he's going to try to do some shit. I have my headphones in. I'm watching a show. And every so often I look up at the mirrors just to check on my surroundings. And every time I look up, this man is staring right at me. Around 37 minutes of my 45 minute playing cardio workout, he drops his phone. But he drops it on the side that I'm on. Okay. Off his treadmill. All right. I was watching in the mirror and he basically threw it down next to me. He gets off the treadmill, picks his phone up, and then he taps me on my shoulder. Now, I never took my headphones out, so I couldn't really hear what he was saying. But it seemed like he introduced himself, but I never called his name. And then he asked my name and I gave him a fake one. That's Jim like 101 or like 103. You see, if you at the gym and you see somebody with the headphones in, why would you go to them and start talking? Like, they can hear you. If they got both headphones in and they working out, they not there to talk. Don't do that. I hate when people do that. He then said something else and it looked like, I couldn't really tell, I couldn't hear him, but it looked like he was saying, do you want fudge? I don't fudge. know why he would ask me that. But reading his lips looks like he said, do you want fudge? Again, I couldn't hear him. I just nodded and I returned to my show, clearly uninterested in whatever he was saying. At this point, I only had like five minutes left and every time I looked in the mirror, he was staring right at me. I finished my workout and I went to the stretching area that is near the treadmills, but I'm still in front of the mirrors. I also took a glance at how long he'd been on the treadmill. It was something like eight minutes or so, but it wasn't long enough to get a workout or even a, a warm up. When I moved to the stretching area, he moved to the closest machine and was still staring at me. Hey, Craig. So what we doing right now, Craig? What we doing right now? Huh? You let me know what's the move, what we doing. To make sure that we not on the same page. Craig. You let me know. 
so I can go ahead and tighten my Adidas 1900s real tight, and I'll go ahead and get the club. Because what you talking about? What you doing? What we doing? What we doing? Huh? Because best believe, I'm going to go ahead. You keep doing that, that club shit, that such shit, I'm going to go ahead and grab it like a little 25 pound weight dumbbell. And I'm going to go ahead and just don't chuck it at your head. I actually caught him staring at me when I was on my back and I had my legs behind my head. Pause. Yes, that is a stretch that I do. He then walked a little closer. And at that point, I took off and I got out of there. I ran out the door. I didn't look back at all. I got to my car, sat down, turned it on, and I grabbed my seatbelt. And as I was about to click it into place, my passenger side door opened and I saw that man reach across the passenger seat. I yelled at him to get out and off my car, and, and I pulled up the parking spot with both doors wide open while he was holding onto the door. He fell off the car after holding on for about 20 meters. I drove a mile down the road with my passenger side door open. When I got home, I noticed that the man dropped a bag on the floor by the passenger seat. In that bag, he had duct tape, a hammer, and some spermicidal lube. Yeah. <laughs> So he wasn't saying, do you want fudge? Was he saying, do you want to fudge? And the next day I went to the gym to report him, but like I said, I never got his name. And the gym didn't want to look at the cameras with me right there. and said that once they figure out who he was, they'll let me know and they'll talk to him, which really didn't feel like they were doing anything about the situation. So the next week I canceled my membership and I never went back to that gym. Hell, man, Jesus. He definitely wanted to fuck. He did not want no fudge. This all started when I moved into our new house and started up a new gym membership. I hate that. I'm 5'3 and I look pretty young for my age. But anyways, so one night at the gym, I saw this weird guy staring at me and sort of follow me around. Honestly, he A looked... story cannot end well when somebody says, I'm such and such height, or I'm such and such years old, but I look such and such years old, but I look younger than I am. That cannot, you, you say like, say for like, for example, you'd be like, I'm 18 years old, but I look like I'm 16. That cannot end well. That's not a good story. It's not. Same thing with saying like I'm five, like I'm five foot, but I look like I'm fourteen. Like that cannot, and that's not a good story. Oh my god! Crazy. He looked like a shell shock soldier. He was very socially awkward, quiet, but he looked like a smart person for some reason. He had a huge build. He was big, probably well six foot four, and he looked like a bodybuilder. So then he eventually passed by the machine I was on, and he looked directly at me almost like he was reading me. It was like a deer in headlights. My gut just told me that I was in trouble. So eventually I get up and I head for the lockers. And no surprise, he headed for the men's locker room, which was right next door. I made myself literally sit in the locker room for about 20 minutes to make sure that he would not leave the same time as I did. So I peer out of the locker room and I don't see him. So I start heading out to the exit. And out of nowhere, this guy literally pops out of nowhere <laughs> and heads out behind me. At this point, I'm now accepting that challenge. Fight or flight kicked in and I was ready to fight. I slow down and I stare at him with the most serious deadlock stare I can muster up. He walks to his car and I walk to mine. We were staring at each other the entire time. I stand there in front of my car. And I stare as he gets into his car. He then lowers his head and gives me the most bone-chilling, evil-eyed stare anyone could ever give. It kind of made me chuckle. I waited for him to drive off. So then I figured I lost him and I started driving home. My ass. I live in a very small town of neighborhoods with dead-end cul-de-sacs. <laughs> oh my God, your lifestyle sucks! It sucks! 
Ashley, I don't know who Ashley is. I just said it. <laughs> your lifestyle sucks. You literally say it was you in a small town with a bunch of code effects. Eventually, either you're going to see him, he's going to see you, or y'all going to meet up again. Jesus, man. So right before I turn into my neighborhood, this SUV rides up behind me on my tail aggressively. I know that man followed me after that, but I have no idea how he did because he was very stealthy. I'm pretty sure this guy is ex-military or something. Just by his demeanor, he looked about 36 years old. He had an SUV and just everything screamed ex-military. So anyways, about three days go by and my husband leaves for work. An hour or so goes by and I'm upstairs in the bed and I hear my front door open. Someone just- My fucking ass, Toby, yo bitch ass. My ass. Any type of <clears throat> crashing or breaking sound or or entering or something opening see see thought I heard some shit anything like that while you at your house and you think you're alone that's heart dropping bone chilling skin tingling like that's probably that's one of the most scariest thing you can ever experience or hear or feel or anything like that. Up into my house, my heart stopped. I had no idea who it was. So I creep out of my room and I see all three of my kids are fast asleep. Yeah, kids, oh my God. One of their rooms and I look out of the window to the street. Then my heart dropped. A van was parked directly in front of my house that I didn't recognize. It was an old unmarked van that was parked at a very unusual diagonal angle and it was running, the lights were on. So I started stumping and screaming and making noise. Why? I waved and I started flickering the lights in my house. I was trying to threaten them and get the attention to the, of the person outside. So the van races off and it leaves whoever in my house. Then all of a sudden, I see this man emerge from under the window with his face completely covered in a clown mask. He was running away from my house. But get this, he had that same build as the guy from the gym. It's just unmistakable. He's huge and I don't really see people like that around here. At first I thought it was a random robbery, but the guy dropped multiple pictures of me leaving the gym and going home. My husband saw that van apparently once after that and it was three weeks later and it sped off when he walked outside. My brother-in-law, a couple weeks after that, came to visit him had to park around the corner. He told me he saw a guy walking by the house and he looked very suspicious. When I asked the description, he gave me the same description as that one guy that I saw at the gym and the one who ran away from the house. Honestly, I'm creeped out and I really don't know what's going on and why this is happening to me. Jesus. Two summers ago, I got a membership to a local gym. It was about two minutes away from my summer job, so I usually went to the gym after work to avoid a ton of driving. My shifts were 6 to 10 p.m., and I'd be leaving the gym by 11. Now, I live in a small and generally safe town, so my guard is usually down. One night while I was working out, a man that looked to be in his mid to late 30s started making small talk with me. We were the only two people there, and I'm a people pleaser, so my responses were always courteous, oh. but as short as possible. I never asked any questions or kept the conversation going. I didn't think much of it, but each time I came back, this man would either greet me or make small talk, and I'd be polite, but my headphones in as usual. It didn't feel that serious or fair to me to start going out of my way to avoid him until one night. I got off work around 10 p.m. as usual. I wish people picked up on social cues, like everybody. 
Cause you ever like not want to talk to somebody and try to keep it short, but then you should try to keep the conversation going. But it's it's but it's it's clear as day that you don't want to have that conversation. You don't even feel like talking. Talking about, hey, what you doing? I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow. Hey, how are you? I'm good. What you doing? Working out. How long you been here? Ten minutes. How long have you been coming here? I just got here. What's in your bottle? A protein shake. What's with the questions? What's with the questions, man? Went to the gym. That man was there, along with another middle-aged man. Jesus. And I got a short workout in. As I was on a flat bench press, as I lay back down, Put my arms up to grab the bar and I began to smell what I would say was cheese. Oh my God. One of those men poked me in the head with something. He grabbed one of my headphones out of my ear and asked that I need a spot. It startled me, so I jumped up quick and I told him no. I was so pissed that I, I didn't finish my workout. What the hell did he poke me in the head with? Uh, it smelled like old cheese. Uh, Afterwards, I went back to my car. The gym was in a shopping center and the parking lot was huge and dark. As all the stores closed early. Out of habit, I locked my car when I got inside and then I started to text my boyfriend. Suddenly, I heard my passenger's side door handle get tugged on hard. Hard enough that if my car wasn't locked, it absolutely would have been open. I looked up and I saw that man looking at my car and smiling. He laughed at the fact that I probably looked startled. He waved and then he tugged on the handle again. He saw that it was locked. And he wasn't getting in, so he stopped. He looked over the car toward the gym and he waved over someone. It was the man that poked me in the head. He began to run toward the car and I sped off immediately. I'm not sure if he was planning on doing something bad or anything or was just trying to prank me. But either way, it, it was a creepy situation and it was inappropriate. So I stopped going to the gym at night for the rest of that summer. And honestly, I carry a weapon on me everywhere I go because of that situation. You should have been dead that. Along with your Adidas 26,000 on. Ah. 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 Hey. That cheese smell that you were smelling when he asked you for it, if you wanted to spot, that cheese smell, that was his dick. Yeah, it was. That was definitely his dick. So next next time, hopefully, that's not a next time. But if you ever smell some some cheese while you you know working out or wherever at a grocery store at the mailbox. Grab it, squeeze it. We're sensitive down there, so you know, just saying. Where, yo, these are some bold ass people to be, to be, uh, to be messing with somebody in a gym because it's like it's all kinds of weights that you can just throw or hit somebody with. But also, to run after somebody in a car, like, to mess with somebody that's already in the car, and you're not in the car, so, like, you're just out, and it's just, like, you, like, your body, like, no protection or nothing, and you messing with somebody that has, that's in the car and it's on, they could have easily, like, ran you over, ran a body part over, hit you with the car, like. On me, on mothers, it's if I, if God forbid, if I ever in a clutch up situation and I'm in the car and it's on, and you're trying to get inside, it's a, it's wraps, it's over. I don't care what happens to you, but I'm gonna cluck you up with my car. Yup, just like that. You got some real, real bold people out here. Also, some of these people, some of these victims be 
be oblivious and dumbfounded about the situation that they're in. And sometimes they just be like trying to, I don't know what their process is, but it's like they don't know what's going on until either it's happening or it's, it's, it, it, it already happened. You're on a treadmill. You're in the front row. You're in the gym. You and somebody else. You're on a treadmill with 20 different other treadmills. It's a line of treadmills. You're on one end. The other person sees you. And instead of going to the opposite end or to the middle, they literally go. To right to to the treadmill right next to you. Get the hell out of here. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. You know, love you. Stay happy. My family.